Welcome to all as we gather on this seventh Sunday after Easter, a Sunday in the church that we call Christian Family Sunday, and a Sunday where we will celebrate the love and relationships that God has given us. And to some, it's the love that came from our mothers and fathers, or could be grandparents or guardians. And to some, their family is their church family, reminded of a sharing time in church about love and relationships. And as I happened to ask this rhetorical question one time, I remember one person said, well, I'm 97 years old. I have all kinds of people who love me and nobody and no enemies. So she was blessed with a lot of love. And may we all have a feel a blessed time for worshiping together with us this day. And I hope you took a note of our life and ministry. Uh, and of course, in the beginning, we have some memorials lifted up to mothers who have nurtured others in their faith. And uh, regardless, so we have a celebration as well. We have a celebration of a man, uh, Junior, we know him as Junior Bowen, but his name is John Bowen. And he had a birthday this past week. So we're going to wish him a very blessed, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. May God's richest blessings abide over you. And we certainly hope you have many more. And as a church, we continually lift those in prayer, those known to us and those unknown to us and known only to God. And we certainly want you to know that God hears the slightest whisper of every prayer and answers accordingly. And I think that's all of our announcements for today. So now let us join our hearts as we open our worship with our introit. Let us build a house where love can live and all can safely dwell. Let us build a house where love can dwell And all can safely live A place where saints and children tell Our hearts learn to forget Built of hopes and dreams and visions Rock of faith and vault of grace Hear the love of Christ share in division. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. And friends, today as we lift up the love and relationships that, w that have nurtured us, we lift up the greatest example of love, the love of Jesus Christ. And as we look at the light and this, of this candle, we remember the warmth that we are given and the blessings of Christ that we are called to share. And for that we say, thanks be to God. Please join me in our call to worship. The Lord calls us to gather as one family in his name. Christ, Christ also, also calls, calls us to, to love him and keep, and keep his, his word. word. The Lord calls us and promises to pour out his spirit upon us. Christ, Christ calls, calls us so that he might grant us his peace. peace. We are called from our separate homes and families to gather as the body of your beloved son, Jesus Christ. Thank, Thank you, O God, God, for placing us in each other's care. care. Gather, gather us as one. one as we worship you in spirit and in truth. Amen. Let us pray together our opening prayer. O oh God, you have chosen and placed us into families. You have promised to make your dwelling place within the hearts of all who hear your word and put it into practice. Send your spirit upon us. Grant us grace during this time of worship and lift our hearts and minds with your holy peace. Amen. Let us now join in singing a wonderful old hymn, Come Let Us Sing of a Wonderful Love, Tender and True, Tender and True.
And now before I come, ask our readers to come and share with us today, let us seek God's blessing upon our hearing and understanding. Gracious God, as we gather this day to hear your word, to lift up the love that you have so freely given to us, open our hearts, inspire our spirits to love one another as you have taught us. Bless our hearing and understanding. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our first reading comes from the first book of Samuel, chapter 1, reading verses 1 to 2, 9 to 17. And I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Samuel's birth and dedication. There was a certain man of Ramathiam, a Zuphite from the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Elkaha, son of Jerohom, son of Elahu, son of Tohu, son of Zuph an Ephraimite. He had two wives. The name of one was Hannah and the name of the other was Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. After they had eaten and drunk at Shiloh, Hannah rose and presented herself before the Lord. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat beside the doorstep of the temple of the Lord. She was deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. She made this vow, O Lord of hosts, if only you will look on the misery of your servant and remember me and not forget your servant, but will give to your servant a male child, then I will set him before you as a Nazarite until the day of his death. He shall drink neither wine nor intoxicants, and no razor shall touch his head. As she continued praying before the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying silently. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, How long will you make a drunken spectacle of yourself? Put away your wine. But Hannah answered, No, my lord, I am a woman deeply troubled. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have been pouring out my soul before the Lord. Do not regard your servant as a worthless woman, for I have been speaking out of my great anxiety and vexation all this time. Then Eli answered, Go in peace. The God of Israel grant the petition you have made to him. The word of God for our wisdom and understanding today. Thanks be to God. Our responsive reading is Psalm 36, Voices United 762. Let us share it together. Your steadfast love, O God, extends to the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mountains, O God. Your judgments are like the great deep. All living things you save. Your steadfast love, O God, extends to the heavens. How precious is your steadfast love, O God. All people may take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your delights. Your steadfast love, O God, extends to the heavens.
For with you is the fountain of life. In your light do we see light. Continue your steadfast love to those who know you and your salvation to the upright in heart. Your steadfast love, O God, extends to the heavens. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And now let us join together in singing this wonderful old hymn, A Christian Home Built Firm Upon the Savior, Where Christ is Head and Counselor and Guide. Let us join Yvonne as we sing that together. Oh, give us homes built firm upon the Savior, where Christ is second reading for today comes from Paul's first letter to the church in Corinthians, reading from chapter 13, verse 1 to 13, from the New 
revised stand virgin. The gift of love. If I speak in tongues of human and of angels but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a chanting cymbal. And if I have priority power and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith, so has to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body, so that I may boast, but do not have love, I, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or open or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not airable. It keeps no record of wrong. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hope all things, endures all things. Love, love never ends, but as it comes from prophecies, they will come to an end, and for tongues they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end, for, for we know only in part, and we prophesize only in part, but when it completely comes, oh. the pressure will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see only a reflection, as in a mirror, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known, and now, and now faith, hope, and love remain these strings, and the greatest of these is love. May God bless to your hearts the reading of our sacred word this day. Amen. Thank you to our readers for sharing that message in scripture and to Yvonne for sharing the message in music about a Christian home. And before we offer our meditation, let us pray. Loving God, as we ponder your word for our lives, we are called to celebrate relationships grounded in your love. Give us humble, teachable, and obedient hearts that we may receive what you have revealed and do what you command. May our meditation be acceptable unto you, for you, O Lord, are our rock, and our greatest example of love. Amen. Today we celebrate Christian Family Sunday, where the church likes to focus on how God has set us in relationships, put us into families so that we could be loved and honored. And for some, it's by our mothers and fathers, but for others, it's other relationships that have formed. And I realize when we honor mothers and fathers that it doesn't bring up great memories for everyone. However, throughout the Bible, we can find a variety of folks who have struggled with relationships and also those who have strayed and struggled as well, both fathers and mothers and people. And it shows that there's always a cost to real love, the love that God has shown for us. And when we engage with these stories in our scriptures, as we just heard from the book of Samuel, we can find many folks, even among us here, who can relate. And I know that most can identify with them because we have struggles. And it gives us an opportunity today, the scripture reading that we just heard and our time together, to look at our blessings and our challenges as we live among ourselves. So I've titled my reflection today, The Cost of Love. There are many accounts throughout scripture, and today I've chosen to lift up women, as there's not many opportunities throughout our scriptures to lift up women. And I've chosen three women today who understood the cost of love. 
of being a loving and trusting parent and an individual who wanted to make the world a better place by trusting in God. And though I have highlighted women, the cost of real love and sacrifice is not merely confined to women. In fact, many have been inspired and nurtured by others whose love and sacrifice we cherish and appreciate this day. We have lifted up today folks who have modeled for us the love of God and who knew our every foible, our every quirk, yet it didn't affect their deep unconditional love for us because their love abided in God. So on this Christian Family Sunday, Sunday, whatever way your heart is tuned, we acknowledge grace, which is perhaps most clearly seen acknowledging that most of us had people in our lives who loved us for no other reason than the fact that we were theirs. They claimed us as their own. We were theirs they, long before they knew anything about how we would turn out. They loved us and continued to love us. Like many of us here, I'm thankful for a mother and a father who nurtured us with a welcoming home, protected us and believed in us and sacrificed much to inspire us to be with a solid faith that was connected to a community church where love was lifted up within that community of faith and where people depended on and looked out to one another. So for a few moments, I'm going to ponder some inspirational women in the Bible whose lives set for us an example of living a costly love because of their relationship with God. Now, the details of these women in biblical times may be different than our circumstances today, but still there was God's desire for all of us to grow these attributes of love, sacrifice, and trust, and those are still very necessary today. Let's begin with our first testament reading that we just heard in the book, first book of Samuel. We hear of Hannah, who for years and years prayed for her son, and when she received her son, she promised to dedicate him wholly unto God. Her prayer was answered, and she brought forth Samuel, and when he was still of a young age, she took the child to Shiloh for religious training. Through her love and her patience, she learned to wait on the Lord and trust in God. But imagine yourself longing for a son, then giving up that son you longed for and turning him over to someone else to be raised. Imagine how difficult that sacrifice must have been. Yet in her love for God and her dedication to the promise of God, her trust in God, she made that sacrifice. Though costly, it was a trust that she gave to God. And the cost of love, we can see, is always great. And there are other inspirational women throughout the scriptures. Take, for example, Jochebed. Jochebed was Moses' mother and who went above and beyond what she understood to save her little boy's life. And we know the story of Moses in the bulrushes. We've heard it since our childhood. It's found in Exodus chapter 1, verses 17 to 19. And we know that at the time of Moses' birth, the Egyptian pharaoh had demanded that midwives kill every Hebrew boy born in Egypt. Something that was done in an effort to control the Hebrew population. But the Hebrew wives refused to participate in the infant infanticide and out of desperate love for their children and for little children, even though they weren't their children, they were those who they were bringing into the world, they all decided to deceive Pharaoh so they could avoid killing baby boys. Now Moses' mother, Jochebed, she hid Moses in a basket of bulrushes and set him afloat on the Nile River to preserve his life. Can you just imagine the lengths you yourself would go through as a parent to protect your child? 
I'm sure a lot of you would go to the ends of the earth. And Jochebed was no different because we read how she let him go adrift in that river. And we read how even Pharaoh's own daughter disobeyed the decree when she found Moses in the basket. She took pity on him and adopted him as her own child. So Moses, Jochebed's son, was raised as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. And just thinking about the heart of Jochebed, who had to watch her own son being raised by one who earlier had decreed his death because of his Hebrew heritage, Jochebed knew the cost of love for her child, and she made the sacrifice not only to ignore the king's mandate and to hide her son for three nights, three nights, three months, sorry, but to selflessly release him so that he could survive and be cared for by Pharaoh's daughter. But in an amazing turn of events, God's love provided for her a way to nurture him because she became, Jochebed became Moses's nurse and she helped Pharaoh's daughter raise him and in that kept her connected to her son. And like Hannah in our scripture reading, out of love, she was willing to sacrifice her son and trust in God for the future of her son's life. And many of us today celebrate the love of someone, whether parent, grandparent, aunt, friend, or acquaintance, someone who is willing to go to the ends of the earth and beyond for our well-being. And then, of course, there's Mary, the mother of Jesus. And without a doubt, she's the most well-known and revered woman in the Bible. The scriptures explain how God chose Mary to be Jesus' mother, granting her one of the most important and transformational roles in human history. And Luke's gospel reveals the grace which, which, with which Mary took the shocking news that she would be Christ's mother. The angel Gabriel appeared to Mary, who was a virgin at the time, and committed to be married to Joseph. We know that story well. And Gabriel told her that she was highly favored and revealed that she would be expecting. And though Mary questioned how pregnancy was possible and was initially troubled by the angel's appearance, she responded to the life-changing news with a heart that was fully open to trusting in God's will. Her reaction is kind of like a lesson for us in our lives when we find ourselves in difficult, life-changing situations. She heard the call from God, and in this instance, she trust, trusted and obeyed, setting an example, I'm sure, for many. But Mary gives the first-hand account of the truth that love isn't for the weak. Love for your child, love for others, and love for God is not easy. And I believe that she also shows how we need to trust that God's plan for us and for our children and for those we nurture is greater than any potential you see and you can see at the very moment. This is the same love that Paul in his, spoke to the people of Corinth in our scripture readings from 1 Corinthians today. He says, love is patient. It's not self-seeking. It does not delight in evil, but it rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Because that love, which Paul speaks, is, is a godly love, a love that always comes with a cost. It's the same love that we've been lifting up this past three weeks in our scriptures. Love one another as we have been loved by God. Friends, God set us in relationships, whether it's family, whether it's among friends, to love and honor God despite our challenges and our struggles. And these scriptures challenge us today to fix our hearts on God, even when situations in life may be challenging because it 
it, any love that we have is truly sacrificial, putting others before self, if it's a love that's trusting and focused on God. It was a love that showed us the way. Christ's love gave his life for us. Love has a cost. It's about giving and not receiving. It's about others before self. And that's the kind of love that Christ wants us to go and continue showing to each other. We're to believe the best about each other. We're to cheer for each other, to invest ourselves in each other. We're to support each other in both the highs and the lows of life. And when we love each other, we can pick each other up after a fall rather than kick each other down. Friends, the love that we have, the love that's been given to us, is both our responsibility and our call. And if we abide in Christ, trust in that, and stay close to the example of our scriptures, we will know that Christian Family Sunday gives us a great opportunity to not only honor those relationships in scripture, but to honor past, to honor our present relationships, but it also calls us to see how we can reach out and follow the example. Not only then will relationships be nurtured, but we will also honor God. And may we go forth and give God the glory. Amen. Would you bless our homes and families, source of life who calls us here? In a world of stress and tension, teach us love that conquers fear. Help us learn to love each other with a love. Let us now prepare our hearts for prayer as we sing, Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place.
Let us come before God in prayer. Let us pray. God, creator of us all, we gather to worship you. Some have come as individuals, others family units, but we all gather as neighbor and friends under your banner of love. We come here where we are known by name, where we are welcome with all our fragilities and our strengths. And we gather with kindred spirits who strive to live faithful to your calling. Guide us, inspire us, comfort and challenge us, and nurture us that we might be able to live the love you have so freely given to us. And make us ready to engage fully with all of your creation. Oh God, you know how hard it is to live in relationships, and yet you call us to do so. At times it's hard to be fully present to our siblings or to others in our families and within this Christian family. Sometimes our patience may be short and we don't really listen. Sometimes we may be tired or lonely or whatever it is that keeps us from loving and caring for one another. Help us to know that you are always with us, loving us so that we may love others. Through all the joys and struggles of living in relationship, help us to lift up this one truth that is offered to each and every one of us, that you, O oh God, have loved us from the very beginning and will always love us. And thanks be to God for that unending love. And as we share our sacred scriptures and their love and trust, we're so thankful for those who witnessed in scriptures years ago. As they have done, may we also seek to live in life-giving relationships with others, recognizing the cost of love and putting others before ourselves and embracing the truth that is offered, the trust and respect and care and humility that we're called to share. May your love and hope be sustained and offered by us every day. And finally, we gather not only in prayer for ourselves, but for others. For you, O oh God of the past and the present and of the tomorrow, help us and help all within this world to live in relationships and seek justice and love and kindness, and to be grounded in your love. We pray for those named within our worship. We pray for those unnamed, those who remain in the silence of our hearts and all known only unto you. May they sense your unconditional love journeying with them. To you, loving God, we lift all of our prayers this day unto our greatest example of love, Jesus Christ, who taught us when we pray together to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, and when we speak of loving and trusting in God, and we are called to be thinking of others before ourselves, one of the ways that we do that and reach out in the United Church is through the mission and service. So I want you to take a moment and just join in this video to show how we do make a difference to others in this world. And following that, we will share our offertory hymn and our offertory prayer. I see you standing around in a strange situation that needs to be turned around Now tell us what can we do I've walked through every day just wondering about everything I'd have to say To get an answer from you Now we need some guidance, something to remind us Of what we've been drawn to this earth for Oh, just give us Jesus And we swear that we will Go out and change the world with Him Now watch our generation begin Now watch our 
Once in a while we see so many people whose faces never held a smile Held a right down like a child's broken dreams Knowing that as days go on, our time runs out to stand as one and That transformation that we desperately need Now we need a song, something to move us along A rousing cry to truth so just give us Jesus and we will give our all We will give everything So watch our generation begin So watch our generation begin Friends, before I share our offertory prayer, I want to acknowledge that these beautiful flowers on our communion table here before our pulpit was given to us today in loving memory of May Ivany by her daughter, Shirley Ivany Clark. Thank you, Shirley, for that. And now let us pray together our offertory prayer. Nurturing God and giver of life, 
We dare to love because all we have has been given to us by your grace. We stand together, making a commitment to live your love. We give thanks to those whose lives have nurtured us with a loving and giving heart. We offer all of these gifts so your good news might be experienced in word and action. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now for our closing hymn, Faith of our fathers, faith of our mothers, living still, we will be true to you till death. Let us join our hearts as we sing that together. And before I share our commissioning and benediction, I want to uh, thank those who have shared in this worship with me and made it possible to our organist and our musician, Yvonne, to our readers, to our technical crew, and to you who join with us. But most of all, thank you to our loving God who has nurtured us with love and given us the privilege to celebrate that love this day. Let us join now in our commissioning and benediction, and it's responsive. Go from this time of fellowship and worship to spend time with those you love, doing what you love, resting in the promises of God. We, we go and resting in, in God's, God's grace as we celebrate the remainder of this day, 
the Sabbath known as Christian Family Sunday. And as you go forth, go forth and lift up the love of God and may they see the face of Christ in you and may you see the face of Christ in them as you go forth and share the blessed love we have been given. Amen.